Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Well, we've got a great little effect for you today. We've got a little section here with a row inside of it and behind the row we've got this animated image and I've got it animating for 30 seconds and it'll start again. Really easy to do. We've got to do a little bit of coding for this today. But don't let that put you off. Any code I write I'll put below the video as usual. So let's get started. I'm going to enable the visual builder. I'm going to add a new section. I'm going to make it a regular section. Inside, I'm going to put a single row. And before I put anything in there, let's just delete the one below. Great. So inside my row here, I'm just going to add a regular blurb module. You can do this with any module you like. But for me today, I'm going to use a little blurb module. There it is right there. And let's see, animated background. And I'm going to use a little icon. So I'm going to switch the little icon switch to on. Doesn't really matter what icon we put in there. Let's put a computer in there. That's fine. Great. I'm going to pop this into the middle. So I'm just going to go straight down to my text and pop it in the middle. I'm going to make it light in color. It'll disappear into the background there. And I'm going to put a background color in our little, in our row here so we can see exactly what's going on. Okay, great. And my image and icon, I'm going to make my icon white also. It'll disappear. Okay, well, let's go into my little row that we've got here so we can see exactly what's going on. I'm going to go up into my row, the green tab right here, green tab for a row, blue tab for a section, dark tab for a module. I'm going to go into it. I'm simply going to put in a background color. On the content tab, here's the background. I'm just going to make it blue. There we go. So we've got our row and we've got our little blurb module there. Great. Well, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to duplicate this row and the module. But before I do that, I'm going to give it a fixed height and I'm going to take away any padding from the row. So still in the row module, let's go over to design. We go to spacing. I'm going to take any padding away, top and bottom. I may add some more back to it in a little while. That's great. As you can see, it's buffered up against the top and bottom there. That's fine. I want to give it a fixed height. So just up above spacing, we've got sizing. First thing I'm going to do is use a custom gutter width. Now the gutter is the space that's at the sides, top and bottom of modules. I'm going to turn mine to off. Well, actually, I'm going to switch this on and drag the slider down to one, which will have no gutters in between this and the next row that we're going to make there, which is fine. Now height wise, I'm going to go down to height. I'm going to make mine say 350 picks and we'll want to check the size of this on tablet and mobile also. So I'm going to say 350. That's fine. I just want to give it a bit of padding at the top. I'll do that in the actual module itself when we go back in there. But while we're in here, let's check this on tablet and mobile. To do that, and this is common to all Divi modules, hover over the dark writing some little icons appear. Go to the thing that you want to affect, in our case, the height here. And if there's a little mobile phone type icon, click on it. And we can check it on a tablet. Let's put it 350 on the tablet also. That's going to be fine. Let's check it on a phone. It can be a bit short on a phone. Let's make it say 400. That'll be fine. I'm going to add say 50 picks padding to the top of this. It'll push it down a bit. Make sure I put that in on the desktop. Yeah, it's there. Fine. So desktop, we got 350. Tablet, we got 350. That will work fine. And phone, we've got 400. And like I say, I'm going to push that down. Great. Well, let's save our little row settings. That'll, that'll take us back to desktop settings. Okay, now I'm going to go back into this little module here. I'm just going to give it 50 pixels padding on the top. 
So I've gone over to the design, down to spacing. Here's padding top. I'm just going to put 50 in. It'll put the pixels in for you. Great. Fantastic. Now what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to clone this row that we've got here. So just click anywhere in it. Row is a green tab. Two little squares to clone it. So I'm going to hit that. And we've got two of exactly the same. Now the bottom one, I'm going to leave just as it is. I will take that background away though. I'm going to go into the bottom one, the row. Remember we put the blue background in there so we can see what height it was and everything. I'm just going to trash that background. So all we've got is an icon and some white writing on a white background. I know you can't see it. But we're going to move it on top of our image in a moment. Great. We'll save that. Now let's go into this one. We can delete that little blurb module. Dark tab for the module. Little trash can. And I'm going to add an image. There's the image module. Now we want to select whatever image it is that we want to see. I'm going to use that sort of spacey starry sky one which I think was this one, seemed to work quite well. And there it is, but obviously it's way too big. Now I know that my row is only 350 tall, which is about here. So this, I need to cut this image off there. Okay, while we're here, let's just double check we've got the overflow hidden on this row that we copied over. Let's go into here, to the advanced, down to visibility. Yeah, we want to make sure this overflow here is set to hidden. And save the changes. That's better. It's cut it off where it should there. When you're on the back end, it occasionally spills out over like this, but on the front end, it'll be absolutely fine. So let's go into our little image now. We need to give it a class name so we can target it with some code. So I'm going into the image to advanced. CSS IDs and classes. We're going to use a class name for this and let's call it AN for animated and image perhaps. You can call yours what you want. It wants to be unique. I'm going to make that a little A actually on there. It wants to be unique. I like it to mean something to me. That way if I see it in the code I can tell what it's for. Great. Well let's save this. And we can go and write some code now. Let's save the page changes. Now you can either go to the theme customizer in the dashboard and write this code, or you can add a little code module and do it right here. I'm going to do mine in the customizer today. So I saved that. Let's go down to the dashboard. At the dashboard, down to appearance, and then to customize. That's going to take us to this page here. I've actually got mine set as the home page. If you needed to do that temporarily on yours, you could do it in the home page settings right here. You need to make sure that it's actually saved though. It can't be a draft. And I'm going to go down into the additional CSS panel and write some code. Here's the code I wrote for the previous one. Let's start from scratch. Always a good idea to give your code a title, which is forward slash, star star forward slash. In between the two stars, you can write anything you want because it won't be read as code. So I'm going to say image scale. Basically what we're doing is we're going to scale this image up. Now we've given this image a class name of an image. All class names have a dot or a period in front of them. So it's dot an image. I'm going to open and close some curly brackets here and tell it what I want it to do. I want it to run an animation. We've got to create a name for our animation. So I'm going to say animation dash name. And let's call it SCIMAGE for scale image. Now we've got to create this animation that we're calling scale image right there. Let's put a little semicolon on the end there. And I want to tell it how long to run. So I'm going to say animation duration. And you can select one from down below if you need to. I'm going to have mine running for about 30 seconds. So I'm going to say colon, 30 seconds. 
And I want it to keep going and going and going. So it's animation, iteration. It's got it right there, the iteration count. And I'm going to say infinite because I want it to keep going. That way it's just going to not stop. Great. Now we need to create this actual animation that we called skimmage right there. So let's drop down a little bit more. We're going to use keyframes for this today. So I'm going to say at keyframes. And then the name we gave it, SC image. Then we can open and close some more curly brackets and give it the actual keyframes we want. So at 0%, I want it to start off as it is. So I'm going to say 0%. I'm going to open and close some curly brackets. I'm going to say transform scale on scale, open some round brackets, and inside I want to just put a one because I want it to be same width and height as it is now. I'm going to copy that. I'll drop down one more. I'm going to say at 100%, I want it to be perhaps twice as big, so I'll say two. So let's paste that in there. I'll say 100%. I'm going to change that one to a two. I need to change my animation direction to duration. I was talking, I missed that. There we go. Now it's taking 30 seconds to scale from regular size to twice the size. And because we got the overflow off, it's staying there. So we just need to publish this. We'll go back to our page. Still got my builder on. What I want to do is just move this up. I know this is 350, so I want to move the little row that's underneath it up by 350. So let's go into that row to design, to spacing. I'm going to give it negative 350. I just flipped it down to negative 1 with the little arrow there. Let's just write 350 in, or you can just type it in if you want. And there it is. It's on top of our animated image there. So once I've saved this and refreshed the page, you'll see that animation start because it'll pick up that code we wrote. So let's save the changes here. We'll save the page changes. And let's exit the Visual Builder. And there it is. It's animating in the background for us there. And once it gets to 30 seconds, it'll start again. So there you go, there's how to add an animated background image to your section, or your row I should say. If you want it to be full width, just make your row full width and you've got an animated background for your section too. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie with System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.